Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. So now that we've calculated the value of i, we can then proceed to calculate dependent stress on the given beam structure. So what do we know thus far? So we've calculated the value of i for the b. So i is equal to 16.33 foot sine center pair of 6 millimeters of four. Or we can have it as 16.33 sine center pair minus i millimeters uh, meters four. So that is meters four. So we've done this bit. So going back to the question, we'll get in some information that the maximum tensile stress, so that'll be sigma t, that measures at 30 MPa, and the maximum compressive stress, so sigma c, that's given at 45 M. EA. So we're being challenged to calculate what is the allowable bending moment, maximum allowable bending moment, which will satisfy the minimum of the maximum stress requirements. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the bending moment with respect to the tensile stress, calculate the bending moment with respect to the compressor stress, compare the two. And once we've done the comparison, the smallest value in comparison of the two, will indicate which one, from a design perspective, is the maximum bending moment that satisfies these two values given. Right. So, how do we calculate for the bending moment? So, going back to the flexural formula, m over i is equal to sigma over y. So, we make m the subject of this relationship, that m will be equal to the product of sigma and i divided by y. Okay? Which is similar to sigma times z. And z is a property known as the section modulus. Okay? So that's basically the ratio of i to y. So we'll talk about this um, down the line. Uh, this is something more uh, relevant to anyone doing some engineering. They tend to use sectional uh, models a lot. All right. So what do we know? So what is y? So y is equal to, let's call this y max. So y max will be equal to the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost surface of the B. Okay. So since the beam is in a state of sag, like so, then the upper portion, okay, the upper portion here is in the state of compression, which means that the bottom part from the neutral axis to the outermost surface of section three will be in tension. Okay, so this part here measures our 30 MPa, um, and this part here will measure a maximum in terms of compression stress at 45. PA. Okay, so what is the distance from the neutral axis to the surface? That will be what? The difference of 180 to 75. Okay, so this means that our y max in terms of compression will be equal to 180, 180 minus 75, and that will give us what? 105 millimeters. Okay. So let's do compression first. So y max for compression is 105 millimeters. And y max, so let's make it clear here. So this is for sigma c, and tensor sigma c. That equals what? The distance from there to there, which would be the same as y prime, which would be 75. This would be 75 millimeters. 
So we've got all the information that we need to calculate the bending moment. So the maximum bending moment with respect to the compressor stress, it'll be sigma z phi phi divided by yc. Okay. Because it's equal to 45, because we're given the compressor stress, the maximum compressor stress to be 45 MPa, which is the same as 45 newtons per meter squared. Times 16.333 times center power 6, all divided by yc. And yc, we work that out to be 105. So 105. Okay. So if we bring in our handy calculator, what do we get? So we've got 45 divided by 105 times 16.333 exponent 6. That's equal to 6999857143 newton millimeter. And this is where we need to be very careful. The basis that we're calculating in is in millimeters. So you should that all parameters are with respect to millimeters. So since in terms of the SI unit, we want our value to be in newton meter, then we need to divide this value by a thousand to make that conversion. So once we do that, divide that by a thousand, this gives us 6999.9 Newton meter, which is the same as 6.999, or even approximately 7 kilo Newton meter, approximately. So we've calculated the bending moment. So we're going to calculate the bending moment for the section of beam under tension. So M max T is equal to sigma T times I divided by Y T. Okay. So this is equal to 30, because that's the value that we're given from the problem. We've calculated I to be 16.333 times standard power of 6, or divided by Y T, and the value of Y T we worked out to be 75. So this is equal to, so let's bring our handy calculator. So this is 30 divided by 75 times 16.333 exponent 6. This gives us 6,533,200 newton millimeter. So again, we want our value to be in Newton meter. So we need to divide this by a thousand. And that'll give us 6.533 kilonewton, uh, kilonewton meter. So we've got two values of M. So how will the two compare? So M respect M max respect to C that gave approximately seven kilometers per meter. Our max let's make sense of that we can make it clear just what we're doing. Max here that gave six point three three kilometers per meter. So this is where we have to be very careful because the question states the maximum allowable, the emphasis on allowable. So what is the maximum bending moment allowed on the beam to ensure that the stresses are equal or less than 30 or equal and less or less than 45? If we were to put seven kilonewtons, and this you can do it yourself too to check. So if you want to do the check, then you can do the stress is equal to Max C, okay, times YC divided by I. Okay. See, if what we get is equal, I'm oh, sorry, let's do this in terms of T, but this is the maximum. If we put in the bending moment 7 kilonewtons per meter into this equation, are we going to get a result where the stress is, in terms of tension is either equal or less than 30 kilonewtons, uh, uh, 30 MPa, or 30 meganewtons per meter squared? That would not be the case. So let's look at this. Bit here. This value is significantly less than that. 
which means that if the bend in moment were to be 7 kilonewton meter, then this is going to give us a value way greater than 30 MP, M, MPA, or 30 meganewton per meter. Okay, so let's give it a go and verify. So if it's greater, then that tells us which value should we take, which will satisfy the condition given. So